I'm Noel Capon and welcome to uh, chapter 5 of your marketing textbook. This is the third chapter in our little series on insight. First of all we talked about market insight, then in chapter 4 we talked about customer insight. In chapter 5 we discussed competitor and complementer insight. Now in chapter 1 of the book we said that the, for the firm to be successful it has to deliver value to customers, but it also has to deliver greater value than its competitors. In other words, it has to secure differential advantage. And in this chapter, we focus on the background data and analysis you need to be able to create that differential advantage. Now, our framework for looking at competitors uh, consists of five different parts. First of all, we have to identify those competitors. And here we focus both on direct competitors and indirect competitors. Direct the ones that are like the firm. Indirect are ones that deliver a similar value, but in some different way, perhaps with a different technology. And we also look at actual or today's competitors and tomorrow's competitors. And each of those four types of competitor, if you think of a two-by-two two framework, uh, are important to get an understanding of. Second of all, we talk about describing competitors, the sort of data that you need and the frameworks to organize that data so it uh, makes sense to you and can help in evaluation. In evaluating competitors, our main focus is on a device we call competitor assessment analysis, which for my money is one of the most powerful pieces of analytic framework that we have in marketing. On the one hand, we take the values that customers uh, require and match those against the strengths or competencies any firm would have to have to be able to deliver those values. Then what we do is see how the firm in effect stacks up against its competitors on those set of, set of competencies. When you've done that analysis, it puts you in good shape to try and figure out what strategy or what are the options and then the strategy of your competitors. Because of course, if you can understand the strategy current and future of your competitors, that puts you in a better shape to deliver, you know, to determine your own strategy. And finally, we talk about managing competitors. The idea that perhaps we can do some things that lead competitors to take actions that are beneficial to the firm. So that's the five-fold, five-part uh, competitive framework that you'll uh, learn about in this chapter. We also talk about complementers. Uh, they're not too often talked about in marketing texts, but they're really very important. The idea is there are other organizations that are relevant to the firm's success or, or failure. Uh, so, for example, uh, the automobile firm's success is, uh, is uh, linked to uh, how well the oil companies do and what the oil companies do. Uh, Apple's success with its iPhone is closely linked to the application developers uh, for the applications that run on the iPhone. And vice versa, those application developers are successful to the extent that Apple is successful with its iPhone. So that's what we'll talk about in this chapter. Uh, you'll get a good understanding of competitors and a good understanding of the various types of, of complementers. Now, one of the things you might want to do is to think about a focal firm. And as you go through this chapter, think about uh, who its competitors are. You know, describe them, evaluate them, and try and figure out uh, what strategy you might expect from them over the next uh, you know, two or three years. You might also identify who the complementer firms and start thinking about what complementers uh, can do or cannot do that will, uh, will help the firm in its goal uh, to be successful. In any event, there's quite a lot of material in Chapter, chapter 5. I think you'll find it a very good basis for helping to uh, develop differential advantage for your firm. Uh, good luck.